All right, so in this video, we'll talk about variance and standard deviation functions uh, in Google Sheets. Let's see how you can use them and what they actually do. So first of all, using them is very easy. Uh, so let's say we have a set of numbers right here. So if we just want to get the variance, uh, the way we do it, we just do equals var, that's our variance. And we go ahead and highlight our numbers here, just like that, close the function, hit enter, then we're done. There's also another function, uh, var p, which is the variance of entire population. Let's go ahead and use that too. So I'm gonna go type the function, highlight the range again, close the function, hit enter, so those are our numbers. So this one was our regular var function. This is var p function. Now let's also calculate standard deviation. So we have our stdev function right there. So again, we just use the function, highlight the numbers, close the parentheses, hit enter, we get our number. We also have our standard deviation for entire population. There we go. We go ahead and highlight all of these numbers, close the parentheses, hit enter. So that's our stdev, and this is our stdevp. Okay, so those are the functions. As you can see, as far as using the functions, it's very easy. Just basically use the function, highlight the range of numbers you have, and get the results. Now let's see what these functions actually do and understand step by step. So uh, first of all, let's, let's move this here. So why do people use variance or standard deviation? Basically, this, these are metrics that show you how far are different values in your data, how far apart they are from the mean, from the average. So uh, if I go ahead and calculate the average for all these numbers, so if I type equals average, that's our average function, I go ahead and highlight all these numbers, close, that's our average. So our average for all these numbers is 1.2. So we want to know how far uh, apart are these numbers from our average, which is our 1.2. So I'll go ahead and actually lock this range with F4 uh, because I want to copy this down so we can see that average next to each one of those numbers. The average is the same. I just thought this would be probably easier and visually better. So I'm going to enter a couple of more columns here. Now let's see how we calculate that. Now the first thing we're going to do, we're going to see the difference between our uh, numbers that we have and our average and we want to square that number. So basically we'll do, let's take our number minus the average and we're going to get some number, which is 3.8, right? And what we're going to do, we're basically going to square that value. So that's our uh, function. So as you can see, uh, I'm going to do my exponent sign and two. So that's our number right there. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this down and basically we're gonna get this minus this squared and this minus this squared. The reason that you square this number or the logically why uh, they use the square is because uh, when we have a negative number, uh, we want to basically turn that distance into a positive number, right? So that's exactly what we're doing by squaring it up is by making sure that if we go from the mean up or down so if uh, let's say if our mean is 1.2 if we go uh, 0.2 lower that's 1 or if we go 0.2 higher that's 1.4 but the distance is really the same from 1.2 right it's the 0.2 one is negative one is positive there we are we have our numbers right so the next thing we're going to do after we get 
this result, we're basically going to go ahead and sum all of those numbers up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do sum here. So I'll say equal sum. So we'll go ahead and sum all of these numbers right here. So that's our sum, which is 92.8. So if you look at our variance right here, uh, one is the regular var function that gives us 23.2, and there is the variance uh, of population, which is 18.56. And the difference of these two functions is this. So once we sum all of these numbers, basically the squares of all of those differences, right, we have here, the next step we want to do, we want to divide this by either the number of basically points we have, or the number of points we have minus one. So the regular uh, variance function is going to be number of points we have minus one. So basically how many data points we have? One, two, three, four, five, right? That's how many we have. So let's actually go ahead and do that. So we're gonna do the count minus one. And I'll do go ahead and do, let's do the function count highlight all of these numbers. So we have five of those minus one. So we're gonna get four. And the next thing I'm gonna do is simply just get the count. Let's just type it in here. Equals count, where are we? Count right here. And I'll highlight the same numbers. Now I'm not gonna do minus one in this case. So if we try to get to this variance of population, that's the variance of the entire population. That means we're dividing this by the total count, which is in this case five. So to get to that number, we're going to take this sum and divide it by that five, which is the number of points we have. And you can see we get to that same 18.56. So to get to this one, we do equals, and uh, we're gonna take the sum number and divide it by this count minus one. So in this case, four. Hit enter, and I'm getting to that variance number. So when you say variance, this is what we actually do. So to go over this really quickly, step by step, we had some set of numbers. First, we calculate the average of those numbers. Then we do the difference between the average and that number squared. And once we do that, we then sum up all those numbers and either divide it by how many numbers we have or how many numbers we have minus one, depending on which one of these metrics we want to get. And that's our variance and variance for our entire population. The next thing we want to do is understand, so what's standard deviation and what's the standard deviation for the entire population? So really the difference between the variance and the standard deviation is that if you do square root of your variance, you're gonna get your standard deviation. So if I go ahead and just do square root, which is our SQRT function, and I use this number right here, you can see that's exactly the same number that we have, which is our standard deviation. And if I do the same here for this number, so I'll just copy it down, I'm gonna get standard deviation of population. So this one is basically square root of this right here. And this two is the variance. If we do square root of this number, we get to our standard deviation. So again, standard deviation, the regular STDEV function is basically the one that uh, does N minus one which is the number of records minus one, and your regular standard deviation of the entire population is gonna be your N, which is gonna be total number of records, right? So in this case, we have five of them. So we're gonna divide it by five first, and then we're gonna square root that, and we're gonna get our number. And basically this is uh, some sort of metric we use to figure out how far apart are our different numbers in our data set from the average. So the smaller number we get here, that represents that the more uh, closer all the numbers are, or the larger number we get, we get that they're more far apart. 
So that's our standard deviation and variance. Hopefully that makes sense. Now uh, let's also look at another function and that's gonna be our function called AVEDEV, which is our average deviation. So if I use this function, I highlight all of these numbers. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna actually move this here. And this is our function. So let's understand how this works. To understand how this one works, uh, we're going to do this. We're going to take our numbers. I'm gonna move this apart a little bit. And the first step, uh, again, we have our set of numbers, we're going to get the average. That's the same. Now the second step is gonna be a little different. So what we did with our uh, variance or standard deviation, we take the difference of those numbers and we basically just square them. Uh, what I'm going to do in this particular case, I'm going to take the difference of those numbers, which is this minus this. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the absolute value. So I'm going to do use the function ABS to get that. And what does absolute value mean? If we get a negative number, we're just going to convert it to a positive number. So in this particular case, if I do five minus 1.2, I'm going to get a positive number. I'm going to keep it. But if I do minus seven minus 1.2, I'm going to get a negative number, uh, which is going to be minus 8.2. So then I'm going to convert that to a positive number. So let's just do it to see how that works. So that's our absolute values right here. See, basically uh, this one, which is negative 8.2, if we do this minus this, so we're gonna convert it to a positive number, which is ABS converts it to an absolute value. Now, once we get those uh, numbers in absolute value, we're going to first sum them up. There we go, we got 16.8. And then we are going to divide it by our count. So let's just do the count here, how many numbers we have. We still have five numbers here, right? So we're gonna get five. So now what I'm going to do to get to this average deviation number, I'm going to simply take that sum and divide it by the count right here. So hit enter and 3.36. And this really represents exactly uh, what's the distance from the average. What's our uh, average distance from the average. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. So that covers our variance, variance for entire population, standard deviation, standard deviation for uh, population and average deviation functions. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and join my next video.